Solo Mini, a top 10 first crop sire in 2023, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. 14 first crop winners, including My Shady Lady, My winner Shady of the $500,000 New York Stallion Series Fifth Avenue Stakes, Grade 2 winner, Winstock, and, and win Stakes stock. winner, Solo and Shot, Solo Mini, the seventh leading freshman sire and the only top 10 freshman sire with a grade one or grade two winner. He sired a $700,000 two-year-old at the OBS April sale. His juveniles sold for nearly six figures on average, more than 12 times the stud fee. Solomini, a controversial DQ from being a grade one winner by two-time horse of the year, Curlin standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbred. Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. All right, welcome back. Happy Friday morning. Welcome in to Past the Wire. I am Jim Gazzali running on limited sleep and plenty of caffeine after recording a late night show covering the Gulfstream Park Florida Derby Day Late Pick 5 last night. And now we're going to do the Arkansas Derby Day card at Oaklawn Park with my good friend, Josh Pearl. Josh, welcome to Pass the Wire. Thanks for spending some time and hopefully finding a couple of winners and stringing together a nice ticket. Jim, uh, good Friday morning. Uh, appreciate you, uh, you know, staying, getting up early uh, after your long night of handicapping and uh, to heck, some great cards at uh, at both you know uh, Gulfstream and Oaklawn uh, tomorrow, and uh, should be a heck of a day of racing. Uh, you know, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to join, and uh, thank you and John and the uh, the entire uh, team for having me. Yeah. So you've uh, you've been following Oaklawn as close as as anybody this year. You uh, watch every race. You take notes on every race. Uh, and you know, you're even gracious enough to, to share those with, um, you know, uh, an email list. So just kind of tell us a little bit about your, your handicapping background, what drew you to, to Oaklawn and, uh, just kind of, you know, your, your overall sort of horse playing and, and sports gambling journey. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been a long one. Uh, I am uh, 36, but uh, you know it's it's it started when I was probably 11 or 12. Uh, my dad took me to uh, Fairmont Park, uh, so I grew up in St. Louis. Unfortunately, we have no horse racing in Missouri, um, so you have to drive across the river to uh, to Fairmont, which is in Collinsville, Illinois. And uh, you know the rest is kind of history. I've uh, parlayed that, you know, pardon the pun, into a career in in, in gambling. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, spend the last seven and a half years at uh, Penn Entertainment. Uh, I worked in our interactive unit. Uh, I, I oversaw or managed our online horse racing platform. That's uh, Hollywood Races is the brand of that. I uh, did that for two years. And then uh, from 20, I guess, 2018 to 2023 was predominantly responsible for opening up new markets for uh, sports wagering and online casino initiatives. And uh, it's been a heck of a whirlwind, as you, you can imagine, with, uh, you know, 35 plus states now legal with uh, uh online sport or uh, with uh, sports wagering and uh eight or nine with uh with online casino now too so it's uh it's been great it's you know i've learned a lot and uh but you know my my love and has always really been you know around horse racing and so what i try to do is um you know any like any form of gambling you try to find an edge right and i think one of the the, the great things about horse racing is if you put in the time and effort uh you can learn a lot you know through replays um you know perceive if, if you perceive there's a track bias you can come up with you know, strong opinions either on horses or against horses, you know, that maybe either were aided by a bias uh, or ran against a perceived bias. But, you know, like anything, you know, it's the eye is, uh, you know, and the beholder, right? So, um, you know, it's it's just an opinion. And, uh, you know, I, I like Oakland to answer your question there because it's, it's one surface, right? Uh, and they really predominantly only run a few uh, distances, six furlongs, a mile, a mile 16th, of course, Every once in a while, they'll have a five and a half furlong race. Uh, you know, we have one at a mile and eighth with the Arkansas Derby this weekend. But, uh, you know, generally, I think you can pick up some pretty good track trends. Um, and, you know, they're full fields. And, uh, you know, the Sell family's done an incredible job of, you know, um, you know, staying committed to racing, you know, even with expanded gaming in Arkansas. And, 
you know, it's evident by the, I think the average field size I saw a few weeks ago through the meets, you know, over nine and a half, uh, which is, is just incredible in today's day and age, particularly on dirt. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably one of the higher ones in the country if, if I had to, if I had to guess, but um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of lean on you to, to share some of those, uh, those track notes, some trip notes and some Oaklawn park statistics over each distance as, as we go through here and, We'll kick off the the late pick five with race nine as we pull up our our trusty DRF PPs and you know we were we were chatting over the phone a, a little bit earlier this morning just kind of getting set for for the show and there were a couple of horses in here that that were fairly interesting um, you know two that that uh, that we both kind of liked. Uh, let's start with with this one in in Dennington. Um, what do you see in this uh, McPeak horse that that caught your eye? Yeah, you know, I try to start my handicapping generally with trying to figure out what the pace looks like. And this was a tough one because you've got Hartman, who's got two sprinters in here stretching out. Um, originally, I thought there wasn't very much speed, but the more I thought about it, you know, I think there could be a good amount of speed. And so I I, I fell with. Uh, it landed on Dennington for two reasons. One, he had no pace to run out in his last race. Uh, he was also very wide throughout on a day that the rail was very good. And we'll talk about that more, but the rail generally is preferable uh, at Oaklawn, particularly in the route races. It's very difficult to sustain, you know, wide rallies uh, and be wide throughout, uh, particularly when you, when they hit the, uh, you know, the short stretch. Um, so, you know, I also like the fact that, you know, BJ Hernandez is in to ride, you know, he's, he's very committed to the rail and the way the track played yesterday, you know, there was, there were no difference really. The rail was the place to be, uh, preferably I think he wanted to be forwardly placed. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's how I fell on, on Dennington. I think he's got a right to improve. I think he likes, you know, he's, he's all right at the mile distance. Um, you know, and, uh, I, ex I expect him to step forward off his last race. And I don't think he'll be five to two in this race either. I, I think this I'd, I'd be shocked if anyone's less than seven to two in this race. That post. Yeah. Yeah. I like Dennington too. Um, you know, I always tend to in these mile races on the dirt, I always tend to, to lean uh, towards horses that are, are cutting back to the mile. And, you know, he ran a mile and an eighth is his last time. He's also one of the younger horses in the race, um, which, you know, I, just tend to to gravitate towards and you know i've kind of been beating this you know not so secret angle uh to death over the last couple of weeks going through the the kentucky derby radar shows and and whatnot but um you don't see it here on the on the drf but i'm i'm a a major brisnet player and he paired his last two Brisnet speed figures at, at 98. So to your point too, Josh, uh, definitely think that Dennington is sitting on a move forward and, um, you know, any move forward, you know, makes him a, a serious, serious contender here. Um, the other one that you liked was the seven uh, Frosted Grace. Uh, what was it about this one that made you want to uh, include this, uh, you know, first time Mike maker on the, the ticket. Yeah. I noticed a few weeks ago, I think flying piece stable shifted all their horses from Deodoro to maker. I'm not sure what the reason for that was. Um, you know, there's always a question, you know, horse running in a barn for the first time, obviously makers, you know, been great with older distance horses over the years, predominantly on the turf, but you know, he's had, you know, lots of success on both surfaces. Right. Uh, and actually a third surface, I guess if you want to call synthetic <laughs> as well, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not concerned about the barn change. What I really like about Frosted Grace is he was three wide throughout also in his last race um, on another day where the rail was the place to be. Uh, you know, his loss against Money Supply, you know, is flattered. Uh, money Supply has been an unbelievable claim, um, you know, high end claim, but he's turned into a grade three winner. And I think he just ran second in the grade two New Orleans last weekend. Uh, so he's been keep, keeping very good company. Uh, he should get a, pretty good tactical trip. Uh, it's not a big field. So I think he'll be able to get some position. Um, you know, he loves the distance and he loves Oakland. He's uh, never run worse than second uh, in five career starts. So uh, like I said, I, I think there'll be a lot of horses, you know, seven to two, nine to two range in here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he's going to be one of them. Yeah. The other horse that, 
that we should just touch on quick is this last samurai. Um, obviously running against probably some of the the stiffest competition in the field, but you got to go all the way back to uh, last summer when, you know, he finished, you know, way, way, way back and was, was kind of pulled up in, in the Whitney. Uh, we haven't seen him since. So always the question mark, uh, new barn, super long layoff, a lot of question marks, you know, horse figures to, to take a, a bit of money given uh, some of the past conditions that he, he raced against. So um, we're not going to include him here, but, you know, worth mentioning that, you know, if he runs back anywhere close to his form from, uh, from last year, uh, last summer, you know, he's, he certainly fits well within this race for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you nailed all the, the main points. I mean, I, quite frankly, late, last samurai, uh, before he ran, uh, up the track in the Whitney, he was, he was one of my horses I was looking forward to betting to, uh, in the, the breeders cup. I assume the classic, um, you know, obviously something went wrong in that race and he's been off, but as you know, the reasons you mentioned, I mean, new barn, new rider, um, you know, it's tough to, to, you know, take a horse that, uh, you know, has been off, uh, for a while, but, you know, undoubtedly, I mean, his, his best races, you know, power over this field. You know, I think the other thing I, I'd be shocked if he's 15 to one, um, like I said, I, I think there'll be a lot of horses, you know, in that, that seven to two, you know, four to one range. It is probably just, you know, worth talking real quickly. I, I the reasons I don't like, you know, logical myth, midnight rate rising. I, I think both come off good trips. I think both have been, you know, probably need to step up, particularly Midnight Rising. This is the best field, you know, he's run against. Silver Prospector, you know, he is an older horse and he's in the best shape of his career, at least back to probably his five-year-old season. Uh, but it's a tough post. I, I envision he's going to have a tough trip from, from out there, you know, with his uh, his running style. So, you know, the Hartman horse is Nautical Star. Uh, he ran a monster race, uh, but, you know, it's tough to play a horse that's uh, never won at the, the distance, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, just got to... You know, these uh, these tickets, you know, plan a pick five, and it's an unbelievably tough sequence. So, you know, you just got to pick your spots where you go. Yeah. Go slimmer. Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll go too deep to, to kick it off in race nine with the two and the seven, and we'll we'll show the, the ticket um, at the end. All right, as we move on to race number 10, the matron – which is always, you know, a, a popular race at, at Oakland every year on this Arkansas Derby Day card. Um, going three deep here with the four, five, and seven. Mucho Macho Girl. What about this Dallas Stewart horse uh, caught your attention? Yeah, she uh, she had a pretty good trip in her last race. Uh, the fact she's only run five times, though, um, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking the way that I, I I analyze this race. One, I think there's a lot of speed um, with all th uh, you know three speed horses drawn outside, and you've also got backyard uh, money, uh, who's uh, I think's got the rail position, right? Yeah, and so I, I anticipate the pace will be pretty quick in here. So I'm looking for some horses that can stay close, uh, but you know have the ability to close. You know, I uh, like I said, I think she had a good trip in her last race, but you know, the way the track at least played yesterday, it'll be interesting to see how it plays today on Friday. But you know, I think if you if you're closing, you you know, want to probably be saving ground, and I assume BJ will have her just off the pace, and if that rail opens up, she could get a, a pretty good run. Um, you know, she was beaten by Zeitlos, really had no excuse uh, last time. I think the position that I took in this race is Zeitlos has won three in a row; she's likely to be over bet. But her buyers really have not increased. Uh, so I'm looking for, you know, some of these horses who have run, you know, less than 10 career races to take a step forward and and hopefully, uh, you know, produce a decent price. Yeah. the I guess Mucho Macho Girl, <coughs> um, I can't remember. She must have been the, the second choice in, in the carousel last time out. You think perhaps, you know, she might have just needed a race off of uh, a little bit of a – a layoff and you know perhaps this you know the layoff wasn't too terribly long but you think just she might have needed a little bit and you know figures to, to take a nice step forward here yeah i think that's it i, I think again she's she's 
young. I mean, she's four, uh, not super young, but uh, again, she's only making her fifth career start. I assume there was a reason why she started her career, you know, a bit later and then she was off, um, you know, for a while last year. Uh, yeah, like you said, I, I'm just hoping she takes a step forward. Um, and, you know, that's at the price, at least on the morning line. You know, I think it's it's worth a shot. Yeah. And this uh, Lilu you liked as well. Yeah, Lilu, uh, my main concern with her is she's been shipped around. You know, she ran at Oakland. She went up to New York. She's been at Keeneland training. Um, hopefully that doesn't catch up with her. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if she's three to one. I, again, I, I think, you know, Zeitlos and uh, Daddy's Ruby are probably going to be, you know, heavily betting here. Um, you know, sh the race, she didn't get a big buyer in that that race at Oakland where she lost to back to Ohio. That back to Ohio has not run back. She's won nine of 10 career starts. That's a, a Larry Ravelli trained horse. She's a win machine. Uh, that day, it was pretty tough to close. Uh, she was wide and, and, and made a pretty good rally late. Uh, so, you know, I expect she'll get a good trip. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think she'll be, you know, uh, a little higher than three to one at post. And <clears throat> this, uh, we'll just take a quick look at, at Zeitlos's figures here since you you touched on it yeah like this this horse has been you know heavily bet um you know especially in the last race uh and even even two back uh went off as the the favorite she got it done both times but you know to your earlier point the figures aren't you know super impressive or at least you know eye popping compared to the rest of this field so at what figures to be a bit of a of a short price, you know, it's it's worth taking a shot. I think at, at leaving this one off and and seeing if some of these other ones could could take a step up and and beat her here. Yeah, I, it was a tough one for me to leave off because she she does win, um, and you can't really take anything away from her. That that you know day uh, where she won the carousel, uh, it was tough to close. Uh, Backyard money ran the race of her career. Um, you know, but it, it took, it took some effort for Zeitlos to get by her. Um, uh, but you know, like you said, I, uh, you know, I, I expect this pick five to pay really well, uh, particularly if one of the you know top three choices loses in the Arkansas Derby. So if you can beat favorites early in the sequence, um, you know, I, I think, you know, position yourself pretty well to, uh, be in store for, uh, some big potential payouts. Yeah. And this Royal Spa, the the seven, another, you know, fairly lightly raced uh, four year old that that you wanted to include as well. Yeah. Another one that uh, in my mind ran against the bias. Uh, the rail was really good. It has been really good most of the days where it, it's been an off track. So just anyone out there, you know, keep if you don't follow the, the track closely, uh, predominantly with the exception of a couple of days uh, when it rains and it rains hard. The rail is is definitely golden, uh, and I know we'll talk about that with the Mystic Dan race. And I know there are plenty of public handicappers that share the same, you know, thought for that day. But uh, yeah, Royal Spa. She lost to Alva Star. Alva Star would would hands down be the favorite in this race if she was here. Uh, I assume that they're probably pointing her for Keeneland, assuming she came out of that race well. Um, you know, Alva Star won easily. Royal Spa was easily second best. She didn't break great. Uh, she did get a decent pace to run at, but, uh, you know, like another one that's only making her eighth career start. Uh, she likes the six for a long distance and, and she has every reason in my mind to move forward off of that, that 81 buyer that she got, which, you know, puts her in this race. And I assume she'll be, you know, eight, 10, maybe even 12 to one. Um, uh, you know, so the price should be right. Yeah. Um, before we, we take a quick break, just, I don't know. I always feel like it's just worth mentioning who's your Philly. <sighs> She's just been seemingly going, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it's not fair to say going backwards, but she's just been racing way over her head ever since they were, you know, brashly talking about, you know, potentially putting her on the Kentucky Derby trail uh, back in, in 22 um, or no, it was 23. I mean, she had, um, you know, a good start to her career three for three. And then they're talking about, you know, running her in some Kentucky Derby preps. And she's just been uh, seemingly has not kind of progressed to that level during her three-year-old year. And even, you know, lately running in a 
uh, the Charlestown Oaks, a grade three, the Cotillion at Parks, a grade one, and then the the Breeders' Cup Distaff just seems like, for whatever reason, this horse has just not found the proper class condition to be successful. So perhaps this is the type of field that um, she can get right and the competition, you know, suits her, but uh, just, you know, a popular name, but certainly one that's very, very, very difficult to trust. Yeah. Uh, you nailed it. I mean, she, you know, certainly the class of the field, I mean, in her defense, she's had some tough trips, you know, obviously the, the distaff had a ton of speed. The rail was not the place to be, uh, at Santa Anita that day, at least in my opinion, uh, that sloppy track at parks. I remember that card. Um, you wanted to be inside in the route races, uh, Charlestown, if I'm not mistaken, I was there that night. Uh, but, uh, you know, speed did pretty well. So she's had tough trips, um, you know, I think against the bias in most of her races, but it's another one. I, I just don't know what type of trip she's going to get in here. You know, as she's, you know, as a two-year-old, she showed the ability to rate and close. Um, but, you know, at the six, six for a long distance, uh, doing that for the first time, uh, has, she has not shown the ability to be able to pass horses, you know, after, after her, her, uh, two-year-old year. So, like you said, I, I mean, you know, the price may be right uh, and I wouldn't fault anyone for using her, uh, you know, just based off of class, but, uh, you know, prefer no to the horses that have been running and, and, you know, have a, a good sense of whether they should improve or shouldn't improve. Um, you know, that, that's how I structure my tickets generally. What's, uh, what is she on the morning line? I don't have the, the morning. Yeah. Line fif the 15 to one, uh, I, you know, I, again, and I, would be surprised if, if that's what she goes off at just because of, uh, you know, the reasons we talked about, which is why I think some of the other horses I mentioned, you know, might be a little bit higher than the, uh, the morning line prices. Right. All right. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be right back to talk about the grade three fantasy. <laughs> You want horsepower? We've got the Sire Power. Central Banker, New York's leading sire three years in a row, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. He has 12 black type winners, including multiple stakes winners and graded stakes place, Banquet, Morning Matcha, and Bank Sink. Central Banker, sire of six figure yearlings and two year olds. He produced nine stakes runners in 2023. Runners have earned $20.5 million on the track. Central Banker, standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. All right, welcome back in. Past the Wire TV, Jim Gazzali alongside Josh Pearl. Going through the late pick five at Oaklawn Park on Arkansas Derby Day. And we are up to race 11, the grade three fantasy. Uh, a Kentucky Oaks prep race with... Uh, featuring probably one of the, the girls that's getting uh, a fair amount of buzz, which we'll get to in West Omaha. Uh, but let's start with the three horse here, uh, Midshipman's Dance. This one caught your attention coming out of the Honey Bee. Uh, what was it about this one that, that made you want to include her on the ticket? Yeah, I mean, several of these come out of the Honey Bee. Uh, it was a weird race. Um, you know, they if you look at the the second and third quarter fractions in that race, they really slowed things down. And I, I think Lemon Muffin and Tapajan Alley uh, were the benefactors of that. Uh, Midshipman's Dance was hung out four or five wide the entire race. Uh, she was still moving all right at the end. You know, generally Midshipman, I'm not you know thinking she wants to run longer. I was against her that race. I really liked her first two career starts. Uh, she ran a monster race in her debut against the Bias. Uh, I was really impressed by that race in the Honey Bee. Uh, you know, the speed figures really didn't come back too high in that race, uh, which is probably a general reflection of this division, at least at Oaklawn. Uh, you know, it seems like there's a new top horse in, in each race that they've run. Um, you know, in this three-year-old Philly division, but. Uh, 
yeah, I think the price will be right. She's got an inside post and uh, she should, should get a pretty good trip. I think this, the, there should be a good amount of speed in here. So I, I generally favor closers. Um, and, you know, for the reason we've talked about, um, you know, the, the rail is, you know, I, I would prefer to, that's where I'd prefer to be in, in the routes. So she should get a good trip and, and the price should be right. Uh, a bold move, I think, including uh, all things go, a, a tall yeah. ask uh, coming out of a uh, restricted maiden special weight race. Uh, you know, I, what are we talking five, six weeks ago? Um, what was it about this one that caught your attention and, and felt like, uh, you know, she fit with this field? Yeah, I uh, I think the first thing to start, I, I caught my eye is Eclipse now uh, owns part of her. So someone must have thought uh, that effort was just as good as as I did. Um, you know, I, I appreciate it's very difficult to ask a horse to do something for the first time. She'd have to take a big step forward. You know, uh, I don't fall in love with buyer speed figures. I fall in love with, you know, what I see visually and you know, she broke well, uh, as soon as Rocco asked her to go, she went and, uh, she was, she was pulling away late. Um, you know, as you mentioned, it was a restricted, uh, you know, maiden race, you know, question how good the field was. Um, but, uh, yeah, she couldn't have been more impressive. Uh, 10 to one's probably short on her. I don't know that she'll be that price uh, unless someone, uh, I'm not, a, I don't have, uh, you know, access to, uh, you know, thorough graph and, and some of the sheets, but, uh, you know, unless she came out of that, that, uh, race with a big, you know, uh, sheets figure, I'd, I'd be surprised if she's only 10 to one. Yeah. Oh, it looks like, you know, at the very least this, uh, the horse that finished third in that, that maiden breaker, uh, just an opinion came back and won next time. So, um, you know, that might, tell you a little bit about the the quality, you know, you, you beat a horse that came back and won next time. So, um, you know, we'll see, but you know, to your point, your earlier point, this seems like a lot of these um, Kentucky Oaks preps, it's like, you know, not necessarily like a flavor of the week, but this, there's a new sort of buzz horse each and every week and different horses are stepping up. Like we see on the, you know, on the, the Kentucky Derby prep side as well with these horses that are still developing. But, you know, just looking at uh, the Brisnet speed figure for, for all things go, uh, an 86 speed figure, 91 late pace, which, you know, by all accounts, even though the rest of the field is, has run a handful more times than, um, than she has, those figures fit with everybody else. So, you know, certainly worth taking a shot and in, in what figures to be a, a little bit of a, of an open race here, we think. Yeah. I, I thought this was the most wide open race, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I wish I could go deeper, uh, but I I'm playing long shots because I, I think it's a long shot type of race. I think you've, you've got potentially the uh, you know, at least a couple of what I would think are the the co-favorites, which, you know, no one's going to be a sh real short price in here. At least I don't think um, on the outside uh, and, you know, the, what are we going? Is a mile and a 16th? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, mile and a 16th races this year uh, at Oak Lawn, um, you know, post nine, 10, 11 and 12 or a combined seven for 130 in the wind spot. So that's about 5% post 11 and 12 are 0 for 35. Um, so, you know, I, I think lemon muffin and, and torpedo Anna are up against it. And so, you know, I'll be looking to play against them. If they beat me, then, you know, I tip my cap to them. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would think that they're the, you know, nice horses if, uh, if they can overcome the, that hurdle. Um, yeah. I mean, squeeze, look, uh, at fault, no one who likes her, she should get a good pace set up. She gets Flavian Pratt, one of the best jockeys in America. Um, you know, but you just question, I mean, she's been running against state bread company. Uh, but you know, it looks like she wants more distance and, uh, you know, assuming the pace is quick, she should be one that's, you know, moving well at the end. But, uh, you know, like I said, wide open race, I thought, you know, I'd go with some prices. Uh, yeah. but you know, on this, on the same, same note, I, I know, I know we'll get, probably get to her, but I, I do like West Omaha. She's not going to be a big price and she, you know, there, she may very well end up being the favorite. Uh, I thought 
The honeybee worked against her. Uh, we talked about some of those slow mid race fractions. She actually lost some position. She was between horses, not too bad. She never really lost ground or had to steady, but I think she just lost position. She was moving very well at the end. Uh, and I expect, you know, with uh, Tyler aboard, uh, she should get a pretty good trip. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I agree with everything you just said. I think she was moving, moving pretty well at the end of that race. And, you know, it's tough to, yeah, it's tough to kind of get a read on, on a race. I think when you have a, you know, 30 to one shot in, in lemon muffin kind of, you know, step up, come out of, you know, one, two, three, four, five attempts at breaking your maiden and then, you know, comes back and, and wins, uh, you know, sort of running away in a grade three. Tough to kind of, you know, in my opinion, at least make make any, you know, strong conclusions of Lemon Muffin coming out of that. And, you know, West Omaha was, uh, you know, a, a sizable favorite um, in, in the Honey Bee. So, you know, maybe she goes off favorite here. Um, you know, maybe some others like lemon muffin, take more money, who knows? But, um, you know, I, I think this one is, is definitely a strong, strong contender in here along with, uh, the next one in, uh, in candy aisle, which you also liked. Yeah. I don't know if she's a strong contender, but it, uh, what I envision will probably be 40 or 50 to one in a race that I think, you know, is chock full of speed. Uh, you know, I think the price is right on her. It's Todd Fincher. It's a gun runner. Uh, Fincher's done well with three-year-old fillies. Um, you know, uh, I think he had what flying was a flying connection in the Oaks last year. Uh, you know, I, look, the horse has been running at Sunland. It hasn't gotten big speed figures, but you know that I will say that day at, at Sunland. Uh, I, again, I don't follow Sunland, but I did happen to watch that day. I thought speed did exceptionally well throughout the card. I thought you wanted to be inside. Uh, this horse was wide. Really had. Not very much pace to run at. I mean, a 24 and 48 is is crawling at Sunland. I mean, that that track is is fast. It's always fast. Um, so you know, look, she should get a, a you know, she gets a, probably the best jockey she's ever had rider. Uh, Fincher's good, uh, very good trainer. Um, you know, and she'll be a monster price. So again, I I think this this whole division is wide open. I couldn't fault somebody for saying you know maybe no one out of that Honey Bee is good enough to win this race. I mean, the figures were slow. But, you know, there are a lot of questions with these three-year-old fillies. They're all, you know, stepping forward. They're improving. They're learning. Um, you know, maybe Lemon Muffin just needed to, to route. Maybe she just wanted more distance, and that's why she, you know, ran so well. But, uh, you know, again, uh, you just play what you think is, is you know, I think what the pace scenario is going to be, you know, uh, who should get good trips, you know, and, and go for prices. Uh, you know, this, this game's tough enough to beat, you know, the 20% takeout, you know, a blended 20% takeout roughly. And, you know, you got to play long shots, in my opinion, um, you know, to have any chance of, uh, you know, winning long term. Yeah, this candy aisle is interesting for a couple of reasons to me. Yeah, you know, it just seems like Fincher's kind of taking her along, um, you know, three straight, six furlong, uh, six furlong races bumps her to six and a half bumps her to a mile. So it just seems like there's like a bit of a natural progression here and just kind of stretching her out and uh, looking at the, the, the Brisnet, um, just a, a steady progressing speed figure pattern. One of the best late pace figures um, in the race really. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think she, she definitely fits in here, especially at a, a huge price. Um, the other two that, that you mentioned this, you know, tap at Ginelli and, uh, and lemon muffin, uh, like we said, lemon muffin kind of took a big step up and, and won the, the honeybee at a, a big price is your main knock against, um, against lemon muffin, just that outside draw and, and how difficult it's been at Oaklawn to, to win from the outside this year? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, look, uh, I'm not the biggest Keith Asmussen fan. I don't necessarily think he gets the most out of a horse late, and maybe that's due to you know how tall he is, but he is very good tactically, and he often gets horses in the right position. Um, you know, but I, I think, again, you know, with, with that outside post, it's going to be tough. Um, 
you know, he may be able to drop back and, and save some ground, uh, but he's probably going to have to nav his, navigate his way through, which with, uh, you know, a lot of horses backing up, at least the, the way that I envision this race unfolding. So, you know, at nine to two, um, you know, I, I just thought the, the price was too short for the, the post uh, to, to overcome that. All right. Moving on to race 12, the big one, the Arkansas Derby. Uh, just looking at it on paper, it seems to be a, you know, at least in my opinion, two horses kind of stick out from the field. The, the two Timberlake and the seven Muth. Um, if you want a, a horse by horse analysis of the Arkansas Derby, check out the Kentucky Derby radar show on pastthewire.com and past the wire TV on the YouTube channel. Uh, John and I earlier in the week went through each horse in detail, talking about whether they were uh, a contender or a pretender in here, but let's start with Timberlake. Certainly a contender, uh, a lot of buzz around this horse. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a disappointing effort in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I think he went off as maybe the second or, or third choice in there. Uh, but came back, ran a nice Rebel, won that by two lengths for, for Brad Cox at Oaklawn Park. Uh, what do you make uh, of this horse and his chances in the Arkansas Derby? Yeah, there's a couple of things I like. One, second start off the layoff, uh, second start of the year. Um, he gets Flavian Pratt. Not that Torres did anything wrong in, in his last race. Um, and he sh he's got good tactical positioning uh, and speed. And I don't envision that there's a ton of speed in this race. Um, you know, I think time for truth is, is likely going to go. And Muth probably sits outside of him, um, you know. Uh, but I would envision that, you know, Timberlake, assuming he breaks well, uh, should get good good tactical position, should have every, every opportunity to, uh, you know, make his strong close like he did last race. So I expect another step forward. Uh, I'm not, you know. I thought we talked about playing long shots. This is the one race where, you know, I thought, you know, this is a favorite that deserves to likely be the favorite, um, you know, and uh, that that's the position I took. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote here looking at my, my printed out PPs, you know, time for truth. I just wrote front and then for Muth, just a question mark. Like, does he just go, um, you know, I think Muth, Muth is probably the most talented horse in, in this field. And, and I figure he can probably do whatever he wants. Um, he can go to the front and try and take them all the way around, or he could, you know, possibly let this time for truth go out and just sit right off them. Um, you know, that the latter of those two scenarios is probably the most likely just kind of looking at it. Um, but, you know, Muth figures to be a, uh, a short price. And, you know, I think just from a, you know, a ticket structure and a gambling theory standpoint, I don't know that you can necessarily include both Timberlake and Muth on your ticket. Yeah. Unless you're, you're looking to spend a lot and, uh, you know, <laughs> go deep in, in other legs to look for long shots, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, at some point you have to take a stand. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm taking a stand against Muth. Uh, you know, he's never gone. Well, I guess and probably none of these have uh, gone the mile and eighth have they, but, uh, you know, he's, he's never won outside of California. So, you know, anytime taking a short price on a horse, doing something for the first time, I, I think is something that I try to stay away from. Uh, you know, he's hasn't run since January. Uh, he, you know, he ran fine in the, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. You know, obviously fierceness, you know, freaked that day. But, uh, you know, it's not like he was picking up any additional ground, you know, late in that race. Uh, so, you know, a question, too, maybe is he better, you know, at a flat mile or seven furlongs? Um, so, you know, that, that's the position I took. So, you know, Timberlake is, is, you know, one of the two horses that I'm using and, the other one will be just steel. Uh, so I know we talked about, you know, Keith Asmussen and his ability to, to get horses in good position. This horse <laughs> has had some of the worst trips. Uh, all three starts this meet. Uh, we talk about how tough it is from the outside post. Uh, last race in my notes, I've got, 
five five to six wide the entire race. Uh, I mean, he had absolutely no chance. He had every right to tire late in that race, and I don't think that Vasquez, you know, really tried late. So the fact that he lost by you know ten, he probably could have lost by five or six. Uh, he was never winning. Um, you know, he wasn't beating Timberlake, but he's had some brutal posts. Not that eight's the the best post, but with his good tactical speed, I expect that he could, you know, sit third or fourth, and he potentially could get to the one or two path in here. Uh, so I, I expect him to run a lot better. Um, you know, I don't know if he wants the extra distance, but the price will be right. And uh, you know, I think he's run some 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 really good races at at Oaklawn. Certainly, that look much better than they are on paper. Yeah, I thought his. Uh... I thought the rebel was, was the race that, that he was going to be a, a contender, but, you know, like you said, you know, going, going five wide around, around both turns, you know, even going five wide around one turn, you know, puts you at a, a significant disadvantage. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you draw a line through the last one and uh, you know, kind of, you know, burn that out of your, out of your mind, and his efforts in the the Southwest and and the Smarty Jones, um, you know, make him make him a, a contender here. Um, you know, we'll see how how that pace sets up um, in front of him. You know, I figure he'll probably be forwardly placed too, and and be in the mix early. So um, you know, we'll see. Worth uh, worth mentioning, uh, Mystic Dan as well. Uh, you know. He just kind of took off on on that muddy surface in in the southwest, and you know ran off by eight, uh, beating Just Steel and and Liberal Arts, who you know not included on this ticket, but Liberal Arts to me I thought was uh, you know uh, if you're looking to to get past Mystic Dan Timberlake and Muth, I thought you know Liberal Liberal Arts was uh, a next sort of logical. Uh, a logical contender, but Mystic Dan, you know, kind of ran off the screen in, in the Southwest. What did you make of that? Do you feel like that was uh, aided a lot by the the sloppy track, or do you, you know, tend to believe the the one hundred and one buyer speed figure that is, I think, one of, if not the best buyer speed figure of any uh, horse on the Kentucky Derby uh, prep trail right now? Yeah, I think there's varying, you know, opinions you can take on that race. One, uh, did he freak uh, because it was the slop? That was his first race on the slop. You know, the second is the rail was golden that day. And Brian Hernandez got inside unbelievably quick uh, from the the outside post. Uh, he had the nine post, I think, that day. Uh, it was an unbelievably tactical ride. The race set up for closers. That's a third thing that I think is working against him. Um, but you know, the one thing he, if you really like him, uh, the one thing you've got going for him, he never showed the ability to rate. And that's why I didn't play him that day. I figured he'd get a good trip with, with BJ. Um, you know, BJ often gets to the rail and, and like you said, you know, multiple times, that's typically the race to be or a place to be at Oakland in these route races. Um, but that day I, I didn't think there was any chance that he could pass a horse. Now someone did send me a, a tweet or something of, of Kenny McPeak, uh, where he did an interview a, a few races, a few days before the race. I wish I would have seen it because Kenny said, you know, that he had been working in the mornings to try to get the horse to rate. Um, but you know, look, uh, uh, you know, you can't argue with the, the, the performance. I mean, he just romped, uh, late and no, no one was closing, uh, any ground on him. You know, as a fact, he was, he was pulling away. Um, you know, one horse that, you know, what another horse that was moving well late was who you had mentioned liberal arts, you know, who was making his first start of the year. I couldn't fault anybody for liking him. I think the one thing that works against him is his lack of speed, but you know, perhaps a second or second race off the bench. Uh, maybe he shows more tactical speed. I just think with the pace scenario in here, at least the way I foresee this race unfolding, he might have a little bit too much to do, but you know, perhaps he gets, you know, second or third and, and gets enough points to, to, to get into the, the, the big race in May. Um, you know, I do want to mention, you know, one long shot I thought, you know, could improve is informed Patriot. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, it's Sunland that day, uh, you know, definitely wanted to be on the lead and, and inside he, he was one that had no pace to run at. I thought that stronghold, uh, it'd be interesting to see what he does, uh, in the next, uh, you know, I think he's probably running in the, um, the Santa Anita, uh, yeah, it's Santa Anita. Next weekend. It'd have to okay. Pass. Yeah, I, I thought he ran really well that day. I think he's a nice horse. Um, you know, I, I another one where I would 
you know, I, I try not to just toss races for no reason. You know, I know people love to say draw a line through a race. I'm not usually the person to do that unless there's a valid reason. I thought he had a tough trip that day. You know, his his third place finish behind catching freedom, obviously is flattered now with, you know, catching freedom running, you know, winning the Louisiana Derby last week. As we mentioned, I think just Steele's a really nice horse. Um, I'm not positive informed Patriot wants the extra distance. Uh, you know, I could see him, you know, potentially running third or fourth in here at a big price though. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the, the finale, uh, and allowance N one X and going, uh, fairly deep here, uh, including five horses. Let's start with the four blame day. Uh, what did you like about this one? Yeah, uh, she's had some tough uh, pace scenarios. Uh, you know, the race uh, two back uh, certainly set up for closers on the on the muddy track that day, and then last uh, her last race on March 9th, uh, certainly favored speed horses. Uh, they had a real slow second quarter. You can see that they went twenty two and one for the first quarter, forty six and two uh, for the second. So, you know, the inside speed that day, I remember, uh, you know, uh, did ex exceptionally well. Uh, you know, I'm not positive she wants to run a mile, but she did break her maiden going a mile on the turf. Uh, so I, I think she should get some good tactical position. Um, you know, if she's good enough, she's good enough. She's not, she's not. I, the, the five deep is, uh, is my, you know, uh, opinion of this race. I think it's wide open. There are a lot of question marks. You have a lot of horses that are stretching out for the first time. You've got horses that, you know, have been running at this general condition who haven't been winning. Um, you know, I would expect there's a good amount of speed, uh, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I went five deep, um, you know, absinthe is, is probably who this race revolves around. You know, if, if she takes a step forward, she's probably the horse to beat, uh, that race at Ellis was, it was a really good one. You know, why she ran so bad at Saratoga, you know, was that due to the slop? Why did they put her on the turf or try to put her on the turf that day? You know, that's another question. Um, you know, does she want to route? I don't know. Is she ready? Uh, you know, I hate to use a short price horse, um, you know, in a, in a, you know, five horse, uh, combination that I'm putting together. But if, if she is, you know, ready to take a step forward, she probably wins this race, but I think there's too many questions to, you know, this, that I couldn't think to single a horse like this, or, you know, even include it in a, you know, one or two, two pick, uh, combination in this leg. Yeah. And then this let's duet uh you included too yep she's had absolutely no pace to run at you know her style uh she has to have pace to run at and i think she'll get that uh, i'm not sure that she'll have enough uh you know bj's gotta try to keep her closer uh, as you can see you know leperu really lets her settle and uh you know at this track at Oakland, it's just so hard to come from that far back uh but both my notes on her last two races she's had no pace to run at um, you know, I think the form even mentions that with their, their S, you know, which, you know, favors speed runners, but yeah, I, I agree. Um, I like BJ getting on and, uh, he, he, you know, should get a, get a good trip or she should get a good trip, but he, yeah. he will give her a good trip is what I meant to say. Uh, Thestral, you know, two back, uh, you know, decent run at, at fairgrounds over a, uh, a sloppy track. Um, another sloppy track effort at, at Oaklawn. What happened in, in that last one that, um, you know, you're, you're willing to, to bet this one coming back. Yeah. I, uh, she was three or four wide the entire race. Uh, I was a, quite frankly, a bad ride. I don't know any other way to say it. You know, Torres, you know, obviously gets, you know, a lot of, uh, um, uh, Uh, what the right term is, um, you know, uh, a lot of accreditation for his riding and he's certainly taken a big step forward this year. I think oftentimes he's on the best horse and a lot of times he keeps horses wider. Um, and, you know, just thinking that he needs to keep them in the clear, uh, again, at these route races, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. And I think that th this race at, at Oaklawn was an instance of that. Um, you know, he had her three to four wide, uh, you know, chasing a, a decent pace. And uh, I just think the both the bias and the uh, the pace flow worked against her. She'll have to carve out a trip from that outside post. You know, the four to one's probably too short on her. 
Um, I just would hate to be in a position, uh, you know, to be alive in this leg and not be spread out. So, you know, even at a short price, uh, you know, I'll include her in my ticket, you know, thinking she'll take a step forward. And then faith alone. Um, what was it? What was it here? Cause you know, typically you know, looking at, looking at her last race, um, you know, not, not up on, on the pace like she had been in her, her two prior efforts, um, at, uh, at Remington. Um, but what, what here after that, that start at, at Oaklawn, um, you know, what would your notes say on this one that, that give you some confidence with her? Yeah, I'll probably eat my words, you know, by including uh, the horse from the 12 post in, in this route race. But, you know, she's going to be probably one of the longest shots in the race. It's her second start of the year. That race that day, which several of these are coming out of Xylophone Malibu Smart, it's set up for closers, but there were a couple horses that tired so badly they were actually taking a lot of the field back with them. Uh, and she was one of those. So if you, you know, see her going from uh, six by four and a quarter to 10th by 10. <laughs> that's what happened there. Um, you know, whether or not she was going to make a big rally, I don't know. Um, but I thought she was moving well, um, at least, you know, in mid race that I, I think, you know, if this race does set up potentially for closer, she's never really shown that ability, but you know, she's only four years old. Um, you know, she only made three starts last year. She did show the ability to rate in that race at Remington. You know, I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, she'll be one. Aramia is typically pretty patient. He likes to get to the rail. So I think if there's any opportunity to do so, uh, he will. Uh, he hasn't been running, riding it uh, at Oakland. So I think he just came in for this this card. He's had a couple couple mounts on other days this, this meet. Um, in past years, he has ridden at the track, but uh, hasn't this year. So, um, you know, she was – my notes said, you know, she was still moving well in the stretch. That might have been the reflection of the pace flow. Um, but, you know, I, as mentioned, I think this race is potentially wide open. Uh, I think it could set up for closers. I, look, I mean, you know, Xylophone's a really nice horse. And, you know, I, I try not to, to bash jockeys. But, um, you know, quite frankly, uh, Chelsea Bailey's, you know, record speaks for itself. And, uh, you know, I, I – if, if she had a better rider, uh, she would probably would be one of my top choices in here, particularly with the race flow. But, uh, you know, I simply just can't play, play her, um, you know, with, uh, with, with Bailey aboard. Yeah. So five deep in the finale, a wide open race. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. We'll show the ticket and then we'll wrap it up. Superfecta. All right. Like you said at the outset of this show, Josh, you could see this sequence, you know, having to to put together a, a pretty deep ticket to feel completely confident uh, about your your play. But here we go. We've got a $120 ticket on Arkansas Derby Day, race nine, two deep with the two and the seven, uh, race 10. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I would say Dennington and uh, Frosted Grace in, uh, in race nine. Yep. And then uh, race 10, three deep with the four, Mucho Macho Girl coming back out of that, that carousel, uh, leaving Zeitlos off of this ticket. Uh, Reluctantly race leaving her off. <laughs> yeah. Race eleven, the the Grade Three Fantasy, 
a Kentucky Oaks prep race, three midshipmen's dance, four all things go, the eight West Omaha, which is getting a, a fair amount of buzz as of late, and the nine uh, long shot Candy Isle, leaving off Lemon Muffin, who who popped at a big uh, at a big price last time in the Honey Bee. Uh, like you said earlier, Josh, just the the far outside post, just too much of a detriment um, to be able to to trust her in here. The twelfth, the Arkansas Derby, too deep with Timberlake and Just Steel. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, if you want a horse by horse breakdown of the Arkansas Derby. Check out the Kentucky Derby Radar Show from earlier this week on Pass the Wire TV. Um, just a couple of other, you know, horses that figure to be decent prices in there. Uh, like we talked about earlier, uh, I like Liberal Arts uh, as a little bit of a long shot play once you get past uh, Muth, Timberlake, and uh, and perhaps Mystic Dan um, as well. And then spreading a bit in the finale going five deep with the four blame day, the five absinthe, the six let's duet, the 10 Thestral and the 12 faith alone. Uh, any parting thoughts from you, Josh, um, any other tips for, for people, but just playing, playing each individual race. What, what are just some brief, uh, you know, track trends and, and tips and notes that, that you've taken throughout this season at Oaklawn. I know you've been very diligent about taking notes and, and watching each race multiple times to, like you said at the beginning, uh, hopefully give yourself an edge here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know we, we hammered on it and, uh, you know, just the route races, you want to be saving ground uh, unless a race complete, completely collapses. Um, you know, I would just, uh, you know, anyone uh, viewing, you know, keep an eye on the track trends. Uh, you know, there, there's no rain expected. Uh, on Thursday, speed did well. Uh, rail obviously did well in, in routes. Um, you know, keep an eye on Friday's races and, you know, assuming they're not going to, you know, do anything different. Uh, I would expect the track to play fast. Uh, speed probably will do well. Uh, but keep an eye on the earlier races and, uh, you know, stick to your guns and your opinions. And, uh, you know, unless you see anything that, you know, a uh, horse is a bigger price than what you expected or, if, you know, that the track is playing a certain way. Um, you know, stick to your, to your opinions. And, uh, you look, I mean, if, if your opinions are correct in this pick five, particularly if, if one of the three top choices don't win, uh, the Arkansas Derby, I mean, it should pay bundles. Um, I think there are a lot of races where you're going to have lukewarm favorites, uh, besides maybe the Arkansas Derby. Um, so if you can beat those, I mean, you're going to knock out, you know, a lot of folks. Um, you know, I think there'll be a lot of big tickets, uh, you know, and there should be, uh, a monster pool in this pick five. Uh, so good luck to anyone playing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Josh, thanks for spending some of your Friday morning with us. Uh, good luck. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to do this again once, uh, I know you said that that mammoth tends to be your, your summer place to play. So, uh, as we, we get rolling down at the Jersey shore, we'll, we'll have you back on and we'll go through another, uh, you know, one of their many big days of racing uh, in New Jersey there. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And, uh, you know, really appreciate you and, and John for letting me, uh, you know, participate. And uh, hopefully we have some some good opinions and uh, hopefully people want to, want me back on after uh, this analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my brother and I have been pretty cold on our, uh, our late pick five plays that we've been posting uh, for the last couple of weeks. And John hasn't fired us yet. So, um, all right. You know. Hopefully we well, we can string one together here at Oaklawn, but if not, uh, you know, you got to, I feel like you got a little bit of job security regardless. There we go. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Some All great right, racing. All right. Take care. Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come on for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting. And it is Mo Donegal to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the Test of the 
champion, the Belmont Stakes. Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Nobody does it better.